What's up and welcome to my video everyone. It's your boy Gamecock Chuck coming to you today on this uh, beautiful Friday afternoon. Hey, before we get started, I need you to do me a couple things. I need you, if you ain't already, I need you to subscribe to my channel. Help grow this channel for me. Help uh, get my subscribers up. Uh, also, I need you to smash the like button on my video, on this video and all my videos. I need you to uh, hit smash the notification button as well. And I need you to, uh, if you want to, you can also leave a comment in the comment section below to uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know how you feel. Uh, whatever you want to say, just leave a comment. Be respectful. I'm respectful back. So look forward to hearing from you if you leave a comment. So today we're going to talk about uh, the 2021 uh, South Carolina Gamecocks offense and uh, what I hope to see, you know, in this upcoming year from, from the team. Um, a lot of good stuff. Uh, well, there's a couple of good things coming back to the team this year that I'm really excited to see. Uh, to see, uh, hopefully, hopefully the offense will look uh, much improved from last year. You know, I was digging through uh, some of the stats and uh, looking through them, and uh, pulled some of them up. And I'm gonna read a few, a few here that what caught my eye the most about the offense and last year and how well we produced. Are performed and if you did watch any football at all or any game caught football you know how atrocious the offense looked uh under mike bobo and his offensive scheme it was stagnant at times couldn't move the ball couldn't do anything offensively it was just horrible all around so like i said i'm gonna read some of the stats that i come across uh that i looked up and researched last night because you know I, i'm pretty old so i don't remember a whole lot of stuff like i used to so uh Last year, we averaged 23.5 points per game, which is like 97th in the country amongst all uh, Division I programs out there. We averaged 355.1 yards per game, which lands us about 96th in the country. So not too good on that. So, And when you play it in the SEC, a lot of premier teams, you need a lot of yards. You need to put up a lot of points. Uh, to compete at a high level. So our third down, when we come to third down conversion, abysmal. It was 36.5% of the time on third down we converted. Uh, Puts us around 94th in the country. A fourth down conversion was probably the best thing we did. Maybe we should have just gotten fourth down all year and we probably would have been a better team. But we uh, converted fourth downs at 73.91%. So that put us around 12th in the country as far as all the teams. And our red zone scoring was about 82.76. And that lands us number 62 in the nation. And that's just some stats I found online. I, I think they're pretty accurate. They sound, sound about accurate. Uh, and if you're a football person, you know anything about football, you can see the glare and the mistake in all them stats. Uh, the thing that really killed us the most is our third down conversion. You know, it was 36.5, like I said, and and that is basically due to a couple of things, I think. The offensive linemen and their pass protection, not being able to protect the quarterback enough to get the ball down the field to complete uh, passes for the uh, first down. But then on the other hand, it could also be, our receivers were not working to get open uh, downfield, not being able to catch the ball, secure the catch. Um, we didn't have a whole lot of production out of the receiving core last year. You know, our our leading receivers, we had two actually good good receivers that had good amount of receptions, and our leading one was Nick Muse, the tight end. He had 30 catches. And right behind him at 21 catches was Kevin Harris, the running back. So, I mean, we really did other than that, we really didn't have any production from the wide receiver. So, of course, our third down conversion is going to be low because nobody seemed to be able to get open, uh, beat the man-to-man -man coverage, the press coverage, whatever the case may be, or either they just dropped flat, flat out dropped the ball for whatever reason, you know. And outside of them two, uh, the running back and the tight end, our next top receiver was Jalen Brooks. I believe he had 11 catches, and then Josh Vann had 10. So, I mean, question there is, where are you receivers? What are y'all doing? I mean, we need production out of you. Uh, time to step up and uh, show us what you can do. So, but uh, I think that was our biggest downfall last year was our, 
O-line in pass protection and our receivers not being able to work themselves open, get down the field, give a good quarterback a good target to throw to or or just flat out drop the ball. So I think uh, we got a lot to work on this season. Uh, I feel very strong in our running game. That's not the issue. I think uh, Kevin Harris is going to have another – outstanding year because the one thing our offensive line did was they did create holes for Kevin Harris to run in because I mean, he didn't just, you know, run around the line every time or, you know, they opened up holes so he can, you know, get his yards. You know, like I said, I'm not too much worried about that. You know, we got him. We got uh, Zaquandre White, which is like a change of pace back. If he can just hold on to the ball, uh, quit fumbling the ball so much, I think he'll be a, an outstanding back. And not to mention our, our star, uh, five-star running back, Marshawn Lloyd out of Delaware, uh, coming in last year. He, uh, two games into practice, he tore his ACL, so he was on the shelf for all year. So I'm excited to see what he can bring to the table as well. So I think uh, running back is not going to be the issue. I think we're going to get our yards. I think uh, Kevin Harris is going to get his, I'm going to say, I think he's going to get his 1,000 yards again. Marshawn's probably going to be pushing close to it as well. Just depends on how you know how well he uh, how well the offensive line plays and how well he adapts to uh, Marcus Satterfield's uh, game plan and make sure he holds on to the ball and you know don't have any glaring mistakes or anything. I think he I think he's going to be pushing a thousand too. So, but back to the receivers, man. You know that's that's where we really need people to step up. And you know Amirian Brown. Uh, to carry on Joyner, EJ Jenkins, you know, Josh Van, like I said, Jalen Brooks, it's time to step up. You know, you're getting a scholarship to play receiver, man. It's time for you to step up, time for you to get out there and show what you can do, man. You can't, you can't go to the next level if you can't catch or block down the field or, or get open, man. That's, that's the name of the game is getting open and getting the ball and securing the catch, man. It, you ain't got to score a touchdown every time. Just, just catch the ball and, and let's help us improve our third down conversion, stay on the field, a little more so but uh i was watching uh, also i was watching uh marcus satterfield's uh comments yesterday from uh the shane beamer golf tournament man i'm really excited the way he spoke about our offense uh, you know his plans for us uh the way he talked about how the offensive line has gotten bigger uh has improved uh how they trying to incorporate some new techniques and how they uh adapting to that so i'm really excited to see you know, if they improved any, especially in the pass protection, like I said, we definitely need that. So hopefully Marcus Satterfield can uh, come up with some schemes and the offensive line coach can come up with some schemes uh, to help our uh, offensive linemen do a better job at pass protection, giving Doty more time to move the ball down the field and uh, stretch it a little more, you know, with the receivers. He did also mention that he did not want to be like a West Coast offense, like a dink and dunk, you know, three, four, five, six-yard passes. He wanted to go downfield, you know, 10, 12, 15 yards, whatever the case may be, stretch the field, get the ball deep down the field. But at the same time, you know, you can't do that if you ain't got nobody that's going to get open and catch the ball. So it's time for the receivers to show up and show out and do whatever, do what you have to do to get open and catch the ball. And uh, I think that would take a lot of pressure off of Doty, off of Harris in our running game. Because last year, you know, with Harris running for over 1,100 yards, that's going to key every uh, every defense that we play in on stopping the run because we have no proven uh, outside weapons, no proven receivers that's going to go out there and beat you. So I think that's going to uh, key a lot of teams that we play this year is – into just stop you know focus on stopping the run so uh yeah i'm excited to see you know like i said his his comments yesterday was pretty impressive pretty uh uh pretty spot on to the way i hope the gamecocks or what i want the gamecocks to look like i'm i'm tired of these little short passes these little quick outs and i mean come on man let's move the ball down the field man we sec we're trying to get explosive trying to stretch the field score points you know that's what it's all about man i'm tired of tired of seeing this uh this uh old i don't even know what kind of system this old bogus system of just chunking the ball just a few yards down the field and yeah man let's go let's let's stretch it out and get better all around uh 
as far as the quarterbacks and the offense for, for this year, you know, like I said in my other videos, it's Doty's ball to, it's Doty's uh, job to lose, you know. Uh, if we can give him plenty of time, the offensive line can hold up. It's, uh, I think Doty will be a solid quarterback in, in a Satterfield system. Uh, he's just got to get his uh, – I think they said he had to work on his feet and his mechanics, his lower body mechanics. So I think if they get that straight, uh, give the man some opportunities, uh, a clean pocket to pass in, I think we have an opportunity to see a little more out of Doty than what we've seen out of two and a half games last year. Because last year, basically, he was running for his, for his freaking life, all you know, the whole two and a half games he played. So I think, uh, I think uh, if we can improve the offensive line, I think that'll help us out with the quarterback. And if we can get some receivers to step up, it'll help us stretch the field, get more vertical, improve our third down conversion, and it also takes some of the pressure off of uh, the running backs. You know, Harris, Lloyd, Rashard Amos. I didn't even mention him. Uh, Zaquandre White. You know, all them, all them guys out the backfield. It'll help. <clears throat> it help uh, take some pressure off of them, and they won't feel like they, you know, have to do it all on their own. You know, because like, like I said last year. The running back was our game. That was it. If you could stop Harris, we could do nothing. So that's my take on the offense. Um, like I said, we we got about all our starters back on the line. Uh, we got Doty on Doty in the uh, under center. Got Harris and Lloyd in the backfield <clears throat> with occasionals on uh, Zaquandre White, and then on the outside is unproven. So, like I said earlier. If you're a wide receiver, you need to start stepping up and getting out there and getting open and getting your catches. Just take some of this pressure off the team. Let's put up some more points. Let's convert more third downs. And uh, looking to, looking forward to seeing what uh, this whole offensive scheme is going to look like this year. I'm excited for the first game. Even though it's uh, Eastern Illinois, I'm really excited. That, you know, we're probably not going to see everything from that offense during that game. But I'm excited to get a little taste of uh, Marcus Satterfield's and his uh, his offensive playbook and uh, what he's going to bring to South Carolina. So, but I guess that'll wrap it up. I think I, I think I covered about everything I wanted to cover. Um, if you're watching this video, if you made it this far, like I said, I need you to uh, subscribe to my channel first. Let's help get my uh, uh, subscribers up, get my channel going better, uh, more viewers and everything. If you know Gamecock, fan, Gamecock fans out there, share this video with them. Let's get them on board. Uh, also, uh, like my videos. It helps me out with the whole YouTube algorithm. Uh, Smash the notification button as well so you can see uh, more content that I put out in the future. And also, uh, if you want, uh, comment on this video, comment on any, any of my videos. You know, I'll, I'll reach, at, reach back out to you and I'll comment back. Uh, just keep it respectful. I will keep it respectful on my end. Uh, if you disagree with me or not, hey, that's fine. I got no problem with nobody disagreeing. You know, everybody's got their own opinion and I believe, you know, everybody should be heard, you know. So with that being said, Welcome home, Coach Beamer, Shane Train 2021. Let's go.